Yes. So I'm going to talk about three campaigns. And the reason why I'm going to pick those three campaigns about is they're very related to, I think, some of the trends hmm. um, that I think are important going forward. But one is a campaign that I did around lead generation. And you don't see um, a lot of work in the lead generation space where folks are literally trying to maintain the efficacy of leads. So it's here, click here, buy here, do this now, or you're gone. And so if you think about it, it's marketing's job to go find somebody. It's sales job to close it. It's a customer experience person's job to have a problem. It's nobody's job to keep them warm and keep them in the fold. And it's very expensive to literally go get that. So lead generation campaigns, I think are really important. And I think the extent to which you can answer objections as part of your lead generation efforts, that becomes really critical. So what are objections? If you do any analysis of, of social media, you'll see that sometimes people have mixed sentiment. They're both positive and negative. Um, I like this product, but I don't like the price. Now, when that mixed sentiment is happening, that should be a cue. That's like a customer saying, yoo-hoo, I'm out here trying to make sense of this. I'm wrestling with this disparity that I have in my mind. That means I'm open to change. <laughs> That's a trigger. That's a trigger for somebody who is prime to have a conversation with. And it may not be by right now, but answering that question and keeping them warm. So lead gen. So I happened to work on a lead gen campaign. This is quite old. Um, it was introducing a new automotive product with a brand new name. And it was an American manufacturer. And obviously they didn't have a great quality reputation at the time. So people believe that, you know, Hondas and Toyotas had a better quality reputation. So literally did a lead gen campaign where... We created uh, with an independent measurement provider an opportunity to take our new product versus the Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord and put 100,000 miles on the vehicles, the same routes, the same drivers. And we literally tracked like what was the amount of repairs, what was breakdowns, what was downtime, all the, but it was 100,000 miles literally for all the products. They had to be independently verified. And lo and behold, our new product did really, really well. Even though it hadn't been launched before, it was American, so it had a quality, a bad quality reputation. And it had a brand new name that nobody had heard of. And so with those facts, we literally put together a lead generation campaign. We needed to sell 20,000 of those units. And literally in the first six weeks, we had 20,000 units in a year. In the first six weeks, we had 100,000 leads for that new product. So then the challenge became, now how do you follow up? So what you see less and less of, particularly as we've moved increasingly towards digital, is just click here, just buy here, just commit here. But again, that whole process of keeping people engaged as they're looking to buy can be very, very effective and I think will be increasingly important. I think if you look at campaigns um, pre-pandemic, there was much more focus on um, trying to generate demand. Yeah. Because it, just in general, pre-pandemic, we had more supply than we had demand. So it's now, how are you creating more demand? The pandemic, with all of the supply chain disruptions and labor force and more globalization, has created new challenges. So you don't have all of those same circumstances with having more supply than demand. But that's a temporary window. And I think lead gen will be important. So that's one campaign. The second campaign, which was very impressive to me, um, and I, I judged this when I was um, with Echo. Mm -hmm. And that was a campaign that was done by Volkswagen in Brazil. And their objective there was to sell an armored vehicle in the country because people were concerned about personal safety. They wanted an armored vehicle in the country to go to very senior executives. The expense of the vehicle was horrendous. They didn't have one of those armored vehicles in the country, but they wanted to sell a fixed amount of them. 
and they literally, there was a campaign and it was so ingenious. It was for a Jetta, a Volkswagen Jetta. Yeah. And it's like the nugget of insight was if it looks like everybody's car, nobody's going to suspect that it's an armored vehicle. You would expect a high-end luxury car, a Mercedes or a BMW to be an armored car. You wouldn't expect this. No. And then all of the communication was based on drawing similarities between the features on the car and things that reptiles do. They change color with their background so you can't see them. They do this. They, and so it called out all the features of the vehicle. They mailed this to senior execs of these large companies, and then they followed up with personal appointments. And they sold out their production without having one in the country. And those vehicles were going for almost a hundred grand a piece. So they have sold those cars in Brazil. Wow. Yes. Yes. <laughs> because when you think about armored car, a, a military vehicle comes to your mind. <laughs> yep. Or you think of like the presidential limousine, you know, exactly. and they, talk, they talk about all the coding and everything. To me, that was just like, wow. I, I mean, the, in, the insight and the size of the challenge and the size of the item you're trying to sell and you don't even have one to demonstrate. Yeah. That, I mean, it was a phenomenal success. Just, just in their minds. They just created yeah. that in their minds. Wow. <laughs> and then the third campaign was really unique. It was in Australia and it was a company that was selling um, executive coaching services. And they had a beautifully written letter that, you know, talked about how important it is that you create um, integrity as a business leader and that you follow through on what you say you're going to do and how disappointing it is when you don't. And that letter was wrapped around a box and the box was the Mont Blanc pen box. So, so you're thinking, Ooh, wow, this is, this is very, they, you know, and you're thinking, boy, they spent money to, to send this very, very expensive pen to all these people trying to sell the service. And when you open the Mont Blanc pen box, there was a Bic pen in it, literally a plastic pen. And when you opened it up, that letter, that box made you feel exactly what that letter said, because your hopes were up and then you opened it up and it was this thinking feeling you had. It was like, how disappointed could you be? And they drove that home with that very simple piece about so they created that level of emotion, not just through the writing, but through the packaging of that campaign. It was it was phenomenal. And they were very successful in selling those services because they were able to get that emotion across. So those, those are three campaigns that just, you know, for me, stand out as all time really high.